Live from Hachi Mama News, it's Hachi Mama. Seems like you people like hippos. Hi guys, I'm back with another episode of Hachi Mama TV. I forgot my name. Hi guys, today we are continuing a topic that we started two weeks ago about hippos. And if you missed my last video on hippos, it would be really helpful to re-watch that or watch that for the first time because what we're going to talk about today is an article that kind of puts everything that we learned two weeks ago into perspective and also puts a new spin on it. We're going to be learning about hippo, which you're not allowed to say on YouTube. The word we're talking about is defined as the buying or selling of something that is illegal but it is most closely associated with the buying or selling of sentient beings who don't want to be bought or sold and are usually forced into labor. So, just so we all know what the word is we're trying to talk about and define that we're not allowed to say. So, I'm gonna say, what's something that's not traffic? I'm gonna call it hippo roadblocking. Hippo roadblocking, so that we don't get in trouble for using those words on YouTube. So, I read this article at the time, but it was two hours into a round of footage that was all about hippos, and I am so dead tired by the end, and this is the very last article I read. I was barely alive, so I'm re-recording this to get you guys a good and fun episode of Hockey Mama TV. So, here we go. Roll the intro. So, this is the article. Manga Bay, Manga Bay? Uh, news and inspiration from nature's front line. In Colombia, Escobar's hippo spawned another problem. Wildlife road blocking. And that has got to be the cutest picture of a hippo of all freaking time. I mean, it makes you want one, but that's what happens is people think something's cute and then they want to keep it in their house. And then we have the problems we're about to see in this article. So let's try to resist the urge to want to keep it in our house. So it gives you like a brief summary in the beginning. And this is what we're going to talk about these four points. An attack on a man in rural Colombia last October has highlighted the little known roadblocking of Colombia's notorious and non-native hippo. The roughly 70 hippos, which we now know there's more, maybe hundreds, in the wild in Colombia today all originate from four animals brought over by the late not allowed to say that either. The town of Doratel near Escobar's fabled ranch is a center of hippo trade, which targets calves and sells them to wealthy ranch owners as a status symbol. Nothing says I'm rich more than an animal that can kill you. And why is that humans? What does it mean? Why are we like this? Lagamon Bay Latin, which I think is the name of the magazine, investigated how the illegal sale of hippo calves works from the inside. I wish I had hippo ears for this occasion. Okay, this name is pronounced Saldarega, but to avoid causing a lot of people a lot of pain, I'm gonna say just John. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, and I'm gonna learn. So, the way John Saladigra tells it, he was out for routine days fishing with friends on a lake about a mile from the fabled ranch of the late Colombian Lord Pablo Escobar. And if you're confused right now because you didn't watch our last video, and if you are being so stubborn that you won't, I'll just tell you there is a small population of non native wild hippos in Colombia brought over by Pablo Escobar. We had a lot of fun with it though without you, so you should probably check it out. It was Halloween, October 31st, 2021, in a lake near Doradal in the department of Antigua, which I think departments must be like states, was known to haunt of feral hippos. And then it goes into the scientific name, um, which looks like it says amphibious. What? That had spawned 
from the four hippos that Escobar had shipped over from Africa. Wow, we knew that. You don't disturb me, I don't disturb you, was John's philosophy to fishing amidst the hippos. At least that's how he tells it to the author. Look at that cute hippo. Let's make that bigger. I mean, that is a belly up baby. So on that day, however, one particular hippo, a mother with a young calf, must have felt sufficiently disturbed that as John tells it, she ambushed him as he was coming out of the lake. A two-ton animal chased him down until he fell. And then it chomped on his arm and flung it into the air. You deserve it, John. Just kidding, I'm sorry. But so what this article is kind of setting us up to believe is you can tell she's like, as John tells it every few seconds, we're supposed to be questioning John's motives. Let's just keep that in mind. With every sentence I read about John, we're gonna say, she can't say his last name. But we're also gonna think, why is he there? And is he a problem? And maybe we don't like John. Well, let's give him a chance. But we hate him. John's friends rushed him to the nearest health center from where he was transferred to a larger hospital about 170 kilometers away, about 106 miles. You freaking Americans. Don't worry, these are not graphic pictures. If it wanted to, it could have crushed me. And goodbye life, says John. Speaking about the day of his abrupt hippo attack, he said it was looking at me as if I- I forgive you this time. If you come back, I'll kill you. Which, who can blame him? Here's another great picture of a hippo baby. It's a little dark, but- Why is there a hippo on the insides? Why is that next to a bed? Hmm, don't seem good. So we keep having to come back to the thesis statement of this article, which is hippo rip -offing. It's easy to get distracted by the beautiful, cute, fluffy ears. But when you're looking at this picture, try not to think, oh my God, so cute, which is my natural instinct. And try to be like, what the heck is that cute little fluffy bunny rabbit doing inside? And why can't we pet him? I have like a genuine stupid smile on my face. I always forget to do this until the very end. So I just wanted to say, like, share, subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you subscribe, it's fun because you get a little notification whenever I post something. And then you never miss any breaky hippo news. And comment. I have a fun question for us to comment about. My question is, what would you name your pet hippo? I would name my hippo Hannah after the cheerleading coach for Navarro in the Netflix series, uh, Cheer. I don't know why he does not remind me of a hippo, but I think it's a cute name and he's a cute person. Yeah, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. All those things, things I have. And me, bop, boop. What a weird structure to a sentence. My username, handle, whatever the frick, is Hachibama TV everywhere. So, thank you guys for the support and for the follows. It means a lot. All 18 of you are my little hippos. And I love you. Hippo allegations. What? Sorry if I spoiled that. For many people in Doradal, John's hometown, the fishing story that he just told is just that. A tall tale. So now we're starting to be like, hmm, what's John's motives? And obviously the people in his town don't freaking believe him. The prevailing rumor is that John had been trying to capture the hippo calf to sell it. We on to you. It's public knowledge that in the area there are wildlife trackers that trade hippo, but the police deny it. However, according to one of the trackers, at least six calves hidden in trucks have passed right in front of the police station. Which a little bit sounds like they're trying to be like, are the police involved? But they're hidden, so I don't know. I'm still suspicious of them. Be suspicious of everyone all the time. If you learned anything from Hachimama TV, it's do not trust them. Only hippos are worthy of trust. I contacted the Colombian, and this is from the perspective of the journalist for Mon Manga Bay. So the journalist contacted the Colombian Ministry of Environment and Sustainable Development, but declined to comment on the issue and referred me to the Alexander Van Humboldt Biological Research 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 Institute. Yeah. Oh. That reminds me of the Billy Eilish clip from SNL where they're like, Welcome to Hotel Garden Inn Suites and Hotel Conferences. That's what that reminded me of, sorry. There's also a college called University of Maryland University College. Never get over that. Also known as the Instituto Humboldt. That's an easier name. This is an independent center under the auspices of the Environmental Ministry. An expert there tells me that the Institute's focus on the hippos extends to understanding the animal's impact on the ecological 
communities. So the Regional Autonomous Corporation for Negro and Nair River Basins or CORNAIR, the local environmental authority says it has complained about the hippo to the Doradel police, but they haven't taken any action. So I don't really know what to say about that. I guess it's like, like, why aren't the police doing anything? But also what could the police really do? Cause it sounds like they would probably just call these environmental authorities and they don't seem like they have much power. We also know from the previous episode, I keep freaking yabbering about that hippos are legally protected as humans in Colombia. Which is both insane and extremely cute. Fishing isn't common in the lake where John was attacked. So why were you there, John? The water is dense and calm, and seasoned fishers prefer to go to a local stretch of the Magdalena River, which crosses almost the entire length of Colombia. Cuties! Let's make them big. I mean, so cute. David Echeverry, which we're just gonna say David, who is a biologist, says there would have been very few fish to catch in the lake, thanks to contamination by non-native hippos. Non-native hippos say, you're welcome. The hippo feces, and this is where I insert the clip of the hippo feces. <coughs> I'm sorry. The hippo feces together with their going in and out of the lake increases the organic load and can accelerate the eutrophic and can accelerate the eutrophification process. I'm sorry if I said that wrong. I know I used to know how to say that. Eutrophication, eutrophication. In other words, the animals have turned the water into a thick green soup due to the excess nutrients in their droppings. Ew. As a result, many of the native fish species have died off. I think I would voluntarily die too. Dave, the biologist says that John was a br very brave man to fish in that lake where there's a female and a calf. Brave or stupid, we can't tell yet. The mother and the calf have since moved to another lake nearby, which is also home to four other hippos. That's cute too. When the mother goes underwater, so does the calf. That's cute. At night, they roam the dry land nearby and at dawn, they return home to the lake. The mother appears to be on constant alert for humans, same. There aren't any security forces preventing entry to the lake. There's just some rickety old signs that were installed a decade ago with a now blurry image of a hippo that says danger. I just found this image and I think if they had used this, they wouldn't have had trespassing issues. Just saying. Honestly, that should be enough. <laughs> the hippos take care of the security themselves. It was the early 1980s when Escobar gave the order to have one male and three female hippos brought over to the ranch from Africa to complete his dream of having the biggest zoo in the world. When people get rich, do they just run out of good ideas? One day we're gonna do a video on what happens to people's brains when they acquire wealth. When he died in 1993, the abandoned hippos, with no walls to contain them, and the perfect climate to thrive in, multiplied and colonized other lakes up to hundreds of miles away. One guy. One fucking guy. Experts estimate that hippos have a population now of around 70, which I don't know who's right here. I haven't counted myself, but we've read there's more. While the animal is notorious in its native Africa as one of the most dangerous animals to humans, there haven't been any deaths to the ones in Colombia. And maybe they're just nicer. Or maybe people don't interact with them as often. But the risk is always there. On May 20th, 2020, a hippo attacked a man named Leo Diaz, and also in Doradel, which is where John was. According to Diaz, he was filling up his water pump to fumigate when the hippo emerged from the water and ran him down. More than a year later, he only leaves his house to get a few moments of sunlight before quickly disappearing back inside to avoid curious stares of those who want to see what such an attack does on a person. He can't work, his brother protects him from interviews, and so the conversation is short. Diaz says he remembers the weight of the hippo's legs on his body, which had to have been a lot. Can you freaking imagine? The broken ribs and the pierced lung and fractured leg. So he got done effed up from the hippopotamus. And you know what? Maybe he didn't deserve it because we don't know what he was doing. But I was about to accuse him of deserving it. That's why I'm talking in this accusatory tone. And so I'm sorry for even almost saying that. I feel like an a**.
Also sorry for my inappropriate usage of vocal inflections. Now I don't know how to stop. Oh God. In October 2021, Conadair, that like really long name, Biological Institute thing, launched its latest plan to get wild, the wild hippo population under control. <coughs> sending a little Asian YouTuber to scream articles at them while burping to drag them away. It hasn't worked to get the wild hippo population under control. Treating the animals with Gonicon, which we also read about, a contraceptive for both males and females, and also chemically castrating them, which sounds like the worst possible form of castration. Why? Why chemicals? Also, what is it doing to the fishies? The ones that are left. 24 hippos have since been dosed with darts, according to this man. Running for the hippos. Four hippos roam a wetland near a farm. Gonicon has been used in veterinary applications. Veterinarian. Veterinarian. Sometimes I can't say things. Gonicon has been used in veterinary applications in China, Australia, the United States, and was donated by the latter's Department of Agriculture for use in Colombia. While the pilot scheme has shown positive results, experts are mulling the need for a third dose for each hippo to guarantee its effectiveness. Sounds familiar. That won't be an easy task, given the risk to the team members and the high cost of around $7,700 per operation. I don't, I, I guess they're using American dollars. Natalie Casablanca, a biologist and the co-author of the 2021 study on the persistence and dispersion of hippos in Colombia, says she welcomes that Biological Institute Cornu. She welcomes their initiative. But the large number of hippos already in Colombia makes sterilization and contraception strategies not really possible on their own. She said they need for a combination of strategies, including calling them, which we learn means killing some of them off if they're weak or whatever, even if that remains highly controversial to some animal rights activists and some YouTubers named me. Casablanca says hippos live for a long time, up to 70 years, and over the decades can have massive impacts on the ecosystem and native species. In an interview with Manga Bay Latum, biologist, his name's German, Germain, biologist Germain, Germains, another co-author of a 2021 study, says the majority of the hippos' times are spent in the water, where they eat, sleep, drink, urinate, defecate, blah, 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 blah. The list ended, but I was my cadence was continuing in a list way. Which causes oxygen depletion. Fish start dying. And plants too, he says. Hippos also displace other herbaceous herbivores. Herbaceous. Herbivorous. 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 Oh my god. Species like mantis and their stomping effect, their little pitter patters, the soil and plant species that grow in the region. So I have dogs and my backyard is a very small ecosystem, as you can imagine. And my dog's little pitter patters have completely pretty much destroyed the grass in our backyard. So I can only imagine what a hippo does. I mean, they're almost hippo size. Buy the hippo! In a cafe in Central Square of Doradel, a trapper speaks about having a hippo at home with no apparent concern about being overheard. Why is this person so confident? Huh? I ask if, I ask if he's not scared speaking so openly about doing something illegal, which is how a normal human being should react. Everyone here knows that who I am. I offer the beast to everyone. Hey! Want a hippo? Hey, would you like a hippo with that coffee? By the way, would you, wouldn't you want to take it? I smile as if it were a joke. This is the journalist talking. You could keep it in a big house if there's a pond. That's enough. Yeah, most people don't have ponds in their houses. Maybe I'm not most people though. Maybe you guys all have ponds. Let me know in the comments. I live in Bogota. I have, I would have to give him in a bathtub, I say. Give me 7 million pesos, about $2,000, $1,800. And if you want, I can take care of it for a bit until you find a place for it. This guy is a pusher. It really is impossible. Also, I'm a journalist, and also that really doesn't have anything to do with anything. I'm just saying that because I'm fancy pants. Look at me. I'm a journalist.
What's that got to do with anything? He had the same response as me. We must have a similar brain. Maybe I should. No. No. Find a partner that you can split the payment with. No one needs to know. Yeah. How are you going to hide a hippopotamus? Hey, guys. You guys can come over and you can hang out in my backyard. But just don't look over my pond. And if something comes running at you, run away. Run as fast as you can. You're going to die. The man appears to be desperate. Yeah, obviously. He's never had to keep a hippo for so long. Well, back in 2021, he says someone called him asking him to deliver a calf urgent. The tracker knew of a female hippo that had recently given birth. So he went to the lake with his wife, the same lake where John was attacked, and looked for the calf. When he spotted it, they used their usual technique of throwing stones at the mother. These people. So that she would abandon the still slow moving calf and they could capture it. Oh my God. This is, this is awful. That's the most awful thing I've ever read. This method isn't always effective. The says, yeah, because mama's gonna protect their babies, okay? And sometimes you're gonna lose your arm. Chew on that. Sometimes instead of getting spooked and running away, the female get angry and charge them like a mother should. They know the dangers, he says, but it's good money and money is everything. I don't need arms. Just give me that cold hard cash. Especially in the region where even a minimum monthly wage of $234 is, is considered a luxury. After the tracker had successfully captured the calf, he was contacted by the buyer only to be told that the deal was off. Can you imagine what that felt like? Is that karma? I don't know, because the hippo doesn't deserve any of this. Hopefully, this ends with the hippo. No, never mind. Fair. Be normal. Brother, seriously, I'm sorry for you, but I can't buy it. I sold my ranch. The chat says, the buyer told him. Can you imagine just being like, hey, do you mind uh, kidnapping the hippo real quick? Yeah, it'll take like uh, 20 minutes. I'll be right back. Yeah, just wait here. 20 minutes later. Oh, I got it. I almost died getting it. Uh, never mind, I don't want I'm gonna sell my ranch anyway. Ooh. Hi, Hi. Another really cute picture of the hippo. And that guy must like motorcycles. And that's a really tiny fan. But a very cute hippo. And let's not forget that. He says he didn't try to push the deal because in the region of big ranches and eccentric owners, someone would surely want the hippo, right? So he had been left taking care of the animal, but it's hard to pay for the cost of caring for such an exotic beast. Yeah, his weighs 5,000 per pound. Well, I actually think. I can't remember. I think it's like two tons, which would be about 5,000. The tracker says the calf drinks about $100 of milk monthly. That's a lot of money. An entire family of four can subsist on that monthly sum in this part of Colombia. Locals say there are perhaps just three people in the area that are familiar with this dangerous job of capturing hippo calves. They say they've heard of other people who do it in the same rivers, but about 12 miles away, 20 kilometers. At the cafe, the traffic gets closer and lowers his voice. This needs to be dramatic. Miss, come meet it. You'll see how you fall in love. If you have kids, it would be the best present because they would surely die. And isn't that, Never mind. Swimming with a dangerous creature. To reach the tractor's ranch requires crossing a maze of muddy trails. Next to the house is a pond of still green water, but the calf isn't there. A petite teenager with big black eyes emerges from the corridor. Are you looking for Campadina? She says. I look at her, confused. Like, what's a Campadina? The teenager says, I named her Campadina. That's the teenager who I think is hiding her face on purpose. And then the cute little bunny rabbit of a hippo we have over here. The child's daughter and the hippo calf spend long days swimming in the pond close to their house. The girls seem excited to have a visitor she can finally talk to about her new secret pet. That would be really fun if you were a teenager. And this thing was epic. She takes my hand and leads me to her room. Capitania, come here, love, she says and repeats it. There's a noise from under her bed, followed by the emergence of two dinosaur-like legs full of folds. Another leg emerges, and then a head. When the hippo calf sees me, it goes back into hiding. The girl drags it out. The calf wiggles its ears in apparent distress, poor calf. Here on this ranch in rural Columbia, a hippo calf lives with a human family, which is so I can't say cute enough. It's like a dream and a nightmare. 
sharing a room with a teenager who had already always oh my god look oh my god look at the dog in the background just scratching his little booty check that out that's hilarious okay i stroke it it's skin is cold thick and gray it's like stroking a leather sofa the calf trundles clumsily towards the girl She's become the animal's maternal figure after the father's illegal actions took it away from its mother. When it's not under the bed, it follows the girl around the house like a spoiled dog, sometimes rubbing its muzzle on her legs and seemingly demanded to be at back. It's amazing. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. The girl bends down and hugs it. We're all living vicariously through this lady, also knowing she's in very big danger. Do you want it to go somewhere else, Leia? It's time. If it doesn't leave, then I don't know what would happen. What do you mean? It can't grow here, and it's impossible to take it back to its mother. This is a very smart teenager. I would have been like, frick yes, let's adopt it. It needs a collar. What color sweater should it wear? For all the girls' life, the hippos have been transient beings, orphans who come for a bit and then leave. Her house is a transient point for these animals rendered motherless because of illegal trade. And this is sad. No one knows if any of the calves that once passed through here are alive today, or if they ended up as a special dish after someone left. Which, again, if you didn't listen to the last hippo recording, you learned about hippo bacon, which is something that almost happened in America and might be happening right now somewhere that I just learned might still be happening. Because we ended the last episode with just knowing it didn't happen. It sounds like people do eat them. Well, f As far as the girl knows, hippos are small, playful things. She's had Andy, Jacko, Australia, Mongola, who she thought was a female and turned out to be a male, but who really cares about gender anyway? One that never got a name because it was sold very fast. And now, Kipanita. I'm sorry, I just forgot how to say that. Also, I had a thought. Oh, we just remembered that their penises go inside of their body when they are not erect. And maybe that's why they couldn't tell what gender it was. Always learning all the time, even when you don't want to. Hippos have evolved to spend most of their time in the water. And then an image. Sorry, I read that like it was gonna be a more complete sentence. Instead, it was a caption to a photo. By the end of my visit in late 2021, Capatina was the second hippo the girl had lived with that year. The previous hippo had been there three months and was sold in March for $1,500. $1,540 to be exact. The buyer was a rancher who paid for all the food expenses while the animal lived in the truck's farm. He also covered all the veterinary bills and paid $50 extra for taking care of the animal. That doesn't seem like enough. There's no such rich patron on Capitania's horizon. The calf eats and grows, but still there's no prospect of finding a future buyer. The truck says he's only had one offer since June, renting the hippo out to a nearby spa. Holy crap guys come on to be the main attraction and the main murder weapon they offered him 130 dollars a day to risk all of their lives he thought about it he says but turned them down considering the risk smart man wait no a hippo in the spa next to a swimming pool with tourists from all over the world each of them taking pictures of the hippo with their phones would spread the story and probably kill a small population of the humans on earth then the police would Come with the media, and worst of all, he'd end up with prison with the owner of the spa serving his sentence of 49 years. And this is, I guess, what ran through this guy's mind. Let's go to the water, the girl says. Capanina follows her to a lake on the property, bigger and clearer than the pond next to the house. The girl runs, and the hippo follows. The animal knows where they're going. The gate becomes lighter in the pasture. It stops by the edge of the water. The girl pushes with all of the strength in her arms and the calf falls into the water. Capitania disappears underwater and then resurfaces. Human and animal follow each other and play. The end. I'm just kidding, it's probably gonna get dark. Let's go Capitania, the girl says. The animal, instead of walking, lies on the ground looking at the lake, still happy to be splashing around. The hippo has evolved to spend 14 hours a day in the water until dusk when they head to dry land in search of fodder. In the wild, those urges are dictated by hunger and heat. Here, by the humans who roadblock them. Do your friends know you have a hippo? I asked the girl, which is also my question. Do your friends know you have a hippo? Asked the YouTuber. What a thing to say. Besides, I don't have friends. 
How come? I don't know. I don't go to school. My only friend is Capitania. It's okay, friends. You know, they're almost like hippos. A hippo calf and a girl come together because of the vicissitudes of an illegal business. The first one, if it's lucky, will find a home with a private pond on some YouTuber's private island where she rents out hippo friends. And they're all friendly and domesticated and everyone is happy. On some far away farmland. The second one, we'll say goodbye without crying so that the buyers aren't scared off until the father brings home the next temporary pet. That just made me so sad. In the meantime, the animal keeps getting bigger, eating and growing, although the family still sees it as a pet as it gains weight and grows the danger of an attack increases. It's a ticking time bomb living inside of a house of an underserved family in Doradel. And I think that's it. So if you guys are liking the hippos, if you want to keep going on this hippo journey with me, the extended version of the hippo bacon story, which doesn't involve any deaths of any real hippos that we know about. I'm sorry if I lied. I'm sorry if something happens later. And I'm gonna re-record that too. So thank you guys. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. I made two accounts now, one on Rumble and one on Odyssey because apparently they are also YouTube-ish locations for video hosting that are a little less saturated. So if you have the, any of those accounts, follow me there. Until then, bye guys. Thank you for watching. Hippos.